Anna Chernikova, VOA's correspondent, joins us now from Kyiv in Ukraine. Uh, hi, Anna. It's good to see you. Anna, it appears you've also moved, uh, you know, from Ivano Frankivs, which, you, you know, we've always been speaking to you from, to Kyiv. Tell us about that journey and what prompted uh, this move. Uh, yeah, well, uh, we just, uh, we've been waiting for the moment to come back, basically, and uh, um, according to the latest events that happened when the uh, Kyiv region was finally liberated uh, from the Russian forces, the Russian troops, uh, we just took the, the, a decision to finally come back, to be closer to, you know, this um, um, post, um, well, Post horrific time uh, to be closer to this area and to stay uh, in the capital. Um, we just moved from the west part back to Kiev, and uh, uh, well, obviously the road uh, was much more easier than it was when we were going uh, on the 25th of February from Kiev to the west part. So, um, situation is definitely changing, and it's changing. Um, well, in inside, it's changing positively. So, Anna, paint us a picture, describe to us the Kyiv where you are now from the Kyiv you left behind uh, to Western Ukraine. Uh, well, it's completely different towns, a completely different cities from uh, what it was uh, on the 23rd of February and uh, what we have now. So, um, the city is very empty, the city is, is silent. Um, there are a lot of checkpoints around, there are a lot of um, different constru security constructions around, uh, military uh, coming, uh, also coming back and forward, uh, checking, uh, controlling the situation. Um, but town is, you know, coming back to life and you can feel that, you know, it's very empty and silent, but at the same time, um, you know, people people start coming back to their daily activities. Uh, businesses started to work again. Some, you know, coffee places and so on and so forth. So um, there is a completely different city, but the city, you know, uh, is struggling to live again. And also speak to us because we remember the mayor of Kyiv saying that, you know, people shouldn't return yet, wait for a couple more days because there could be uh, munitions that, you know, were still live and, and landmines as well. I mean, there, there are those risks still, aren't there? Uh, of course, uh, there is not, uh, I don't want you to think that, uh, you know, it's completely, um, it's completely now. Uh, dif I mean, it's, com safe. it's completely uh, safe now here. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, uh, of course, there, there are risks. Of course, uh, everyone understands that. Um, well, hostilities, hostilities uh, could still happen, and we have air raid sirens during the day, a couple of times during the day, and a couple of times during the night. Um, but uh, the city of Kyiv itself, especially those areas that were not uh, affected by hostilities. They seem quite, you know, safe. Uh, of course, areas around that uh, suffered that horrific events, uh, the cities of Bucha, Irpin, uh, Hostomel, uh, uh, Borodanka, uh, of course, there uh, is still quite dangerous, but still people are coming back at least to see how their houses and how their homes are doing. Uh, of course, they are not come back yet, but um, still, you know, people start to bring humanitarian aid and so on, on and so forth, just checking out uh, how people are doing there and, and, and so on. Um, uh, a lot of people are coming back, this is true, uh, but uh, of course, everyone are quite, you know, um, waiting until, you know, until there is really a good time. So uh, people from the Kyiv region that suffer the most, they still cannot come back. I know, and like they say, there really is no place like home. Uh, so we can understand people wanting to, to get back to their homes. And I give us a sense of what's happening in eastern Ukraine. We understand Ukraine's deputy prime minister is urging residents uh, of the eastern regions to evacuate. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the east part. It's basically the main uh, 
um, the, the area with uh, the main actions going on right now. Uh, so um, Russian troops are concentrating there and in three, four days we're expecting a huge attack from Russian, side, from Russian troops uh, to the east, on the east parts. So, uh, yeah, the government is trying to evacuate as much people as possible and uh, uh, government is asking people to uh, evacuate themselves with their private transport uh, because uh, they could get into a situation that was in the Kyiv region when at one point people just were not able to get out at all. So, uh, we are expecting uh, very, very huge, huge battles uh, in, the, in the coming couple of days. Also, uh, some of the events we've seen today is the U.S. imposing sanctions on Putin's adult daughters. We've seen targets uh, Russian banks as well. The U.K. imposed sanctions uh, on Russia's largest bank. Um, have there been any reactions to this and perhaps previous sanctions uh, by the West? The Ukrainian government, um, we're telling their partners, their European partners and U.S. partners to uh, go on and impose another package of sanctions, especially uh, these negotiations began uh, after we all, the whole world, uh, saw uh, the horrifying images from European and Bucha um, in the Kyiv region. So um, the reaction is, well, it, it was expected that sanctions would, would come. Uh, of course, Ukraine expects more sanctions and expect, expects more serious sanctions and, uh, and at the same time in, in parallel expect uh, military support. So um, it's definitely positive reaction but uh, again uh, uh, we're, in Ukraine there are hopes for oil embargo at one point. And finally, Anna, this also follows the, the outpouring of reactions from the international community on what happened in Bucha. And, you know, there was that meeting with the United Nations Security Council uh, as well. And we've, of course, seen um, the Ukraine president appealing uh, to, um, I think he was uh, his latest to Irish parliament. And this is to, you know, impose a lot more, show more leadership. Um, but in the overall, with regard to this war, the concentration in the east and the other parts uh, for Ukrainians fleeing, would you say that it is safe uh, for them to sort of come back and this is to um, areas that, that perhaps appear safe now since Russia says it's moving that fight to the east? When you have a wide-scale war, of, of course it's not completely safe anywhere. So. Um, and uh, everyone understand that, uh, people understand that. But I should say that, um, you know, there are more than 40 days now of this terrible war and um, people just, you know, have a little bit different perception. So uh, there are risks, but when these risks are minimum, um, people, you know, to take the decisions to come back home or to move to uh, to move closer to their hometowns. And I think this is quite normal, taking into consideration that, well, you cannot find an absolutely 100% safe place. Of course, uh, we all understand that east parts of Ukraine uh, are not safe at all. But if we talk about west part and Kyiv at this point uh, of time, um, well, I can say it's quite safe. But of course, you should understand that the war is going on and uh, you can feel it and you can smell it in the air. We appreciate your time. Anna Chenikova joining us from Kyiv in Ukraine. Thank you and do stay safe. Thank you.